Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Big Brother Season 25, Episodes 3 and 4. Yes. Now, hold on. Before you go. Yes. It's very important that, number one, do y'all see this? This is pages on pages on pages on pages of notes. So, I need y'all to do one thing for me before every episode that y'all see of these reviews. Subscribe to the channel. Share the channel, like the channel, and then at the end of the episode, comment. Our goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers by December. Yes. Do you think we can do that, Blair? I think so. With y'all help, please help. Yeah. <laughs> we need y'all help. So, so, so while Blair does a great job, and we all can agree Blair does a great job of writing all these notes, I have a call to action for y'all. Subscribe to the show. We now we continue with regular programming. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to do a kind of a quick synopsis of episode three since episode four is Big where word. the meat and potatoes are. Uh huh. So episode three, we find out, um, well, this is going where we left off before, where we find out that the targets, uh, well, who's left on the block is Felicia and Kirsten. Mm hmm. So, uh, we move on and we see that the, uh, first big real <laughs> alliance is made called the handful. Mm. And this is Jag, Blue, Riley, Matt, and Cameron. Okay. Um, then we see Felicia talking to, um, some of the other ladies in the house, Bowie, Jane, Izzy, um, Nicole, and Siri, Siri. Uh-huh. Um, now, hold on. Before, before you say it. Yeah. Don't say the uh, the actual word. I don't want you two to flag us. Okay. Okay. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a rule that like the first five minutes gotta be clean. Right. So okay. So I just wanted to say that before uh, you, you actually say it. I got it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh huh. So uh, Felicia, she notices what's going on with the people that were in the scary room, uh -huh. and she's saying that we need to create our own alliance called the Bye Bye Bees. Yes. So at the five minutes, we say it, but, <laughs> but now, not now. <laughs> now, the weird thing is Bowie Jane, she gets up and walks out the room. That was weird, right? That was very weird. She, she also is the one who said, well, shouldn't we get Riley in? And mm. they were like, Riley is on the other side. Like, are you listening? Are you paying attention? And after she said that, she said, well, let me, I'll be back. Right. See now you're out. Yeah, you're yeah, out the yeah. alliance because no, you no. be a funny. Exactly. Guess right. what? If the next time you on the block, you out of here. Exactly. But, but, but we're talking strategy. We're not talking reviews. My fault. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we move on and we see that Riley is going to bring in Corey, Jared, and America into their alliance uh -huh. because they just need to get more numbers in the house. Yeah. So Jared ends up telling his mom, Sari, about the alliance that he was brought into. And Sari said, we already knew that. Mm. <laughs> and she's got her own thing going, but she's saying she's happy that he is part of that alliance. Yeah. So that way she can get the information from the other side of the house mm -hmm. as to what's going on. So we move on to the veto competition. Uh -huh. um, we have Riley, Heisem, Felicia, Cameron, uh, Kirsten, <laughs> and yeah. Blue. And um, during this competition, they are stacking up 35 flowers and they have to hit the button. They're getting splashed by water, pulled up by their draws. And the winner ends up being Heisen, who wins the veto. And you know what's funny? Mm -hmm. I was like, this is kind of easier competition than I thought it would. Then I realized this competition was like 40 minutes of them oh, trying yeah. to stack these unstackable items that, that was partially a mental game because like i would have been wanting to give up within the first five ten minutes not not <laughs> not you realize that you got a whole 40 minutes left if you could nobody else can do it right but um no this definitely is a mental game more than the physical game and so forth right yeah so heisem ends up the winner of the veto competition and and, and that's crazy because nobody recruited him to any alliance. Yeah. Mm. So he's a free bird out here. Yeah. And he decides not to use the veto. Oh, my goodness. And that's where we end on episode three. And uh, now we at eviction night. Yes. Yes. Live eviction night. Uh-huh. So we start from where we left off with Heisen deciding not to use the veto. Uh, America, she is questioning if it's bad to have Kirsten leave the house at this point. 
she's just thinking that she's a free agent. She really wants to extend her loyalty to people. Maybe we could use her. Maybe I can use her. Felicia has uh, people she's close to uh, within the house. So, yeah. so there's not much room to be played with Felicia. She kind of has her people that she's cool with. And that's why in my head, I was like, America might be on to something. Mm -hmm. Is if you don't have somebody in your alliance, in your alliance, listen to me because I am a big brother pro uh, apparently, right? <laughs> Tell us what's up. <laughs> yes, if you don't have someone in your alliance, I think the second best thing to have is someone in debt to your alliance. Mm. So when America said, "You know what? We should save Kirsten," yeah, because she's not in a she's not in any alliance. Mm -hmm. I don't know at that point if she knew that Felicia was in the alliance, but I would have saved Kirsten to send Felicia home mm -hmm. to let everybody know, hey, this is the first shot at your alliance. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Kirsten, she owes us. Yeah. So that's at least two people that is coming off of your alliance that's going to go home. Now, I'm just playing devious and just guessing. Of course, there's a whole bunch of turns I don't know, like backdoor and all these other things. But that's probably when America said that, I'm like, oh, I, I would do that. Mm -hmm. I would do that to send a shot to Cersei and all of them in the other room and so forth mm -hmm. to let them know we run the house and this person now in debt to us, even though they're not, quote unquote, in the alliance, but now they owe us. Right. So Hysom is talking to us. Uh, well, pretty much the bye bye bees and saying that he wants an old people alliance mm. every year, which is true. The old people get voted out first. They're not usually as strong. And also they are not usually as big in numbers. This is really is the first year that they have a good amount of older players in the house. Now, question, since uh, you are really the big brother pro and, and this is my first season watching it in, yeah. in fullness. Is this a known thing for big brother as much as the black people thing like? Yeah, like, like it's, big, another it's thing. like it's like side by side. Like these are the two things that basically happen. Yeah, old people don't make it, and black people usually don't make it. Yeah, back in the day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Hysum is saying we should also rope in Red and Nicole uh, to get their numbers up for their alliance, mm -hmm. and <laughs> and then they come up with the name the Professors since they're taking the kids to school. I, I thought that was clever. I think y'all need to workshop the name, but <laughs> but who am I, you know? We uh, get a little tidbit. If you haven't noticed, uh, Luke has been nowhere to be found mm. within these two episodes. So what happened with Luke is that he was in the room with Jared, Corey, and Heisem mm -hmm. talking. And then the N-word slips out. Oh, my talking goodness. Talking to Corey, trying, like in a friendly manner i guess you can say but he does it in front of jared it kind of to me seemed like he was trying to poke the bear to see what he could get you know with. get away with trying to see how far he could go it was so weird it was so out the blue it was out the blue it didn't even fit mm. and then he said he was trying to say something whale or like whatever word it was it was it was nickel whale narwhal or, or, or something like yeah. that and i'm like no yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't get those two confused. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem that I guess you was talking to me about is that this is the problem that Big Brother really has and so forth. Yeah. This is the same. We actually just answered a question from a comment to Xavier, San, Xavier Santiago, basically asking about the social construct and will they feel the burden of that. And my whole thing is I'm happy that Big Brother has a code of conduct now. Now, <laughs> about time. Because I ain't, I ain't know about this code of conduct. I thought, I thought this was supposed to represent the real world, and basically supposed to basically show like a mirror thing of how it happens. But I didn't know that you could get kicked off the show for for being that blatantly um, racist or mm -hmm. basically being that blatantly um, disrespectful. Well, to this is one of the first. Well, this is the first time they've ever done it. So I was shocked to see it, but really? I was happy to see it. Yeah. Uh huh. Because I ain't never heard about no code of conduct and getting people <laughs> kicked out. Really? This is the first. Yeah. But like, do you know what's weird about th this scene? Jared reaction was weird to it. Luke reaction was even more weirder. Like basically like 
Corey and her son, they 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 left. They, they was like bye bye. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Corey was like, "What the heck?" Corey's like, "You need to go to bed." Yeah, man. Like you are wild. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, Hassan, he ran. Yeah. But then, like Luke left, and then he came back, and then he was kind of like, like joking around, like you know, man, like you know, it's not like that, right? Like mm. you know, like I was trying to say Narwhal or whatever it is, and Jared was basically like. I kind of don't know how to really, like, should I react because I don't want to come off as angry. I don't want to, basically, he's trying to. He tried to play it he's off. He's trying to play it off. Like, it seemed like he's trying to put the game currently over his offense. But maybe he wasn't offended at all. I don't know. What yeah. What did, like, you think about the whole thing, Blair? I don't think he was offended. I think there are black people like that who don't take. Um, what people say at face value. Yeah. Uh, he even him himself, when Corey tried to, you know, when the house had the meeting, yeah. Corey tried to say, well, maybe we should make it a group discussion of what happened so everybody is aware. Mm-hmm. And Jared was actually against having the group discussion and saying that he has friends like Luke and he doesn't associate ignorance with malice. But he understand that understands that there are consequences to your actions and he was made aware of the rules before they came in the house. So honestly, I don't think Jared was offended. Uh, Like he said, he has friends like Luke. So he might just put up with that type of ignorance and and doesn't think anything of it. Yeah, Jared, I don't know what the hell you was talking about, buddy. Yeah, I, I really I'm don't. totally, I totally disagree. do not have that sentiment. <laughs> I totally disagree. I'm not just going to look past the things you say. No. You say what you said and, and what you say matters. Number one. And it points to your character. Number, so. n- number one, as Blair said, I don't know you enough to know what is your intention. Right. I don't know what you mean by that. I don't know what you mean by that. And I'm not going to try to do mental gymnastics no, no. To, to give you a reason. You haven't earned my grace. Exactly. And if this is a game, you lucky I didn't go out the studio where where, where Julie was and be like, <laughs> he said, you know what I mean? But no, that I guess what we saw on the, on the third episode or basically the second episode was basically what everybody been writing think pieces about Big Brother and the problem they've been having for, for years and years and years and years. Yeah. And my thing of that nature is just because you're the only guy, you're not the only black person in the house, Jared. So I don't think you should speak for everybody in the house about basically how everybody should feel and how nobody should talk about it and things like that. Nobody even knew what happened. Right. I felt like it was good to bring it up yes. for the house to know and everyone would be on the same page as what's going yes. on. Yes. I thought that was a good conversation. And then, and then use that to your advantage for the game. Mm-hmm. So guess what? As far as I know, because he said this word, no black people going home for four weeks. And people want to talk so much about educating folks mm-hmm. and, and getting people who are different together to have these conversations. Well, this was the moment. Yeah. And Jared, you, and Jared you put dropped a damper the ball. On you dropped the ball, buddy. Yeah. Okay. So we move on to red. He goes up to Riley mm-hmm. HOH's room to talk to her. Uh, Riley calls, I mean, red calls out Riley's alliance to her face, which was so Weird. odd, so odd. <laughs> Riley said that she would tell Red if there was something going on. She's like, those are just my buds. Mm-hmm. Like, we get along, we hang out. But no, there's nothing going on. And of course, Riley, that's what you're supposed to say. And Red, you're not supposed to say people's lines to their face. That gives you a huge target. And like, <laughs> it, just, it just shows that how people react to power. Mm-hmm. The power of knowledge. Yeah. I know something that you're trying to hide. And besides me just playing it cool... I'm going to go to you and I'm going to try to basically put you up against the wall or basically put you in a box of, you know what? I know your alliance. Red, you put a red target Mm -hmm. on your back, in my opinion. You better win every competition or every veto because just because you know who they are, you are one person. Mm Mm-hmm. They got the numbers against one person. And even if they're going to target your side of the house uh-huh. anyway, you didn't have to be first. No, okay? you didn't. You didn't have to be the first one. They say, okay, so he knows, she knows, they know. So we're going to get these three exactly. first. And, so. al- and also, listen to the strategist, even though it's first season watching the full, the full thing. All right, strategist. Thank you. Um, you got to look at your team compared to their team. Mm-hmm. They got the muscle. Most of your team who recruited you is a team of older women. Mm-hmm. So 
if it was to come to a competition, Red, are you strong enough to win the competition for your alliance every time against Matt? I think his name is. Yeah. Matt and so forth. Jared mm-hmm. and 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 Cam. Mm-hmm. Corey. Is Corey part of the alliance? Yeah. Yes. Are you are you willing to take on the the brute strength that's needed for your alliance to go against them? That's why I'm like, you shouldn't have even let them know because now. I feel like you put a target on your back. Mm-hmm. And he should have just sitting there cool with the sunglasses on and the running shoes <laughs> Like, on. I know. I'm it's like, just like, I don't even know what's going on, buddy. Okay, you know something. Yeah. <laughs> so then we get into the conversation with Riley and Izzy, where Izzy pretty much does the same thing. Uh, Cersei, control your people. <laughs> Cere. Cere. Oh, I'm thinking of Game of Thrones. C- Cere. Ga- Game of Thrones. Control your people. And I don't even understand what Izzy point was here. Like, I really don't. Do you? I just think like how Sari says sometimes Izzy gets emotionally charged. Oh, I feel like maybe this yeah. is one of her her moments. Mm. So Izzy plans on targeting Riley the first chance she gets. Wow. Izzy says uh to Riley that they are both working with other people. Let's cut the BS. Wow. And Izzy said, like, you know, we really do like each other, so we're both gonna be looking out for each other. And Riley, rightfully so, is like, I don't believe what she's saying to me. Of course not. <laughs> she just said we're working on other sides of the house. So Listen here. Yeah, I can't take that for for real. Riley got got those white women tears working and so forth. She was crying, basically talking about how All the pressure oh uh, yeah the pressure and how like everybody looking at her and 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 basically scared of her and she don't want it to be like that good job riley you playing the game mm. and izzy felt i think izzy fell for the trick with the whole idea of you know how izzy cut her off and be like, you know what let's cut the bs uh-huh I'm like i know you know and i think she fell for the trick she let herself basically she was too hubris Mm-hmm. You use a big word. I use a big word. She was too <laughs> prideful in her own alliance yeah. and in the knowledge that she knew, and and I think that's going to really hurt Izzy in the um in the end and their alliance. Yes, and it showed even in the first episode where even when she knew who Sari's son was, she couldn't keep it to herself. She couldn't keep it to herself. She didn't even know how to use it to her own benefit. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So so um. I think like that's really going to hurt Izzy and possibly um, the Bye Bye Bees um, in the future. Yeah. So then uh, Sari and Izzy get to talking outside. Uh huh. Sari doesn't want their target to grow because of Izzy's large personality. Izzy is retelling the conversation that she had with Riley and mm-hmm. how everything went. And Sari is laughing, talking, joking, but she's just like, you know what? Like, you know, I'm I'm having a good time now, but she could really, you know, rub people the wrong way and, mm-hmm. and, and it, it could go bad for us if she doesn't get a ring on herself. And the funny thing about it is, Sari, right? Yeah. You could tell Sari didn't like that or what Izzy did, but she's like, but Izzy know my secret. Right. And she even said to her, I need you, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I need you. Yeah, like. So, like, yes, keep her close. Keep her close. And while, and while I'm on this hammock push me <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it it just shows that like the wrong person with the wrong power controls a lot of things izzy got probably the most power when it comes to the secret the the first alliance that was made before anybody even entered the house mm-hmm. jared and sari so sari got to deal with this crazy lady <laughs> who can't keep her mouth shut who has a big personality who can't lay low who can't lay low and and it's just like, at what point, when do Sari put Izzy on the block? We will see. Yeah. We will see. So, before the live vote, uh-huh. we have a conversation with Riley talking to the Handful Alliance, explaining her conversation with Red to her, her alliance, and they're all just kind of playing around with the idea of keeping Kirsten as an additional number like America had mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. So we get to the live eviction and Kirsten is evicted 13-0. Oh my No goodness. pity votes, no swaying of decisions. It was a wrap. 
So Kirsten gets evicted. Mm-hmm. And that is the end of the episode. Of course, she talks to Julie. They give her some goodbye messages. Um, but we didn't get to see what the HOH, comp- <laughs> HOH competition is going to be uh, for Sunday. So we'll see that on Sunday. Yeah. So far, what are you thinking now? Like we we can talk a little strategy. Yeah. What are you thinking so far based on the uh the years and decades of you watching this show Mm -hmm. is this the fastest that you ever seen clicks form alliances form or 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 like is is this any different than any other season you've seen it's not different from any other season they usually do um link up with people pretty fast um but at the same time they have some sort of connection with the people to where it actually is solid i feel like what kirsten's downfall was is that maybe she felt like she had a connection with the people, but those people didn't have a connection with each other. So the failings five that she was trying to put together, they didn't know each other well enough to really be able to trust one another. So that was just not going to work. But Kirsten didn't see it because she felt like she had made these close relationships with these people. But to me, it didn't look that way from the outside looking in. You can tell the difference mm-hmm. with the uh, handful of lions. Mm-hmm. They all genuinely do seem to like each other, like to hang out with each other. They joke around a lot. They share the room together. Yeah. And then with the older people and the ladies, they have a bigger goal at mind. So they want to have the older people move far. And as far as the bye bye bees, they came together knowing, okay, these guys are already working. So we really Mm got to pull together and get some numbers together or else we're going to be cherry picked. Yeah. And in my opinion, and and maybe you could chime in on it before we head on out of here. I think initially outside of like, you know, she being a woman. Yeah. Kirsten, I don't think like they view you as a leader. Mm. So... You can't be on the block or basically you can't lose and then try to form an alliance to save yourself, to save yourself, because people will view that as number one. You're coming from a point, in my opinion, of desperation than like a point of trying to win. Yeah. Basically, you're trying to starve off like, oh, let, like, let's get off the block. Besides actually coming with a actual plan of people to win competitions to get to the end. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go so far because like Big Brother, y'all already got problems. Y'all got people on y'all show saying words and stuff like that. So I'm not even going to say like the alliance didn't work because she was a black woman and things like that. And you had mixed races in there. I just think it didn't work because the loser can't come to people and form an alliance. Right. Like we've seen how you compete. Mm-hmm. And how you competed against people, and you're on the block. We really have no real reason. Yes, yeah, so to it's work like why? You. Like why would I? <laughs> mm-hmm. I I see how you couldn't move the lever and win. You came in last place, and then you're coming to me trying to form an alliance. I don't want to be in an alliance with somebody's weak. Yeah, because I'm gonna be on the block every time. I like you can't save us from being on the block. Yeah. So, but the thing is, she felt like she had to do something, and she did. She couldn't just sit and be quiet and not do anything. Did she need to form an alliance? Maybe not. And then going to Sari and but, talking about protecting her when she's on the block. Like they said, she was playing real hard. But she may not know the history of the game. What is my man named Hassam? Hysam. Hysam. I'm gonna get your name right. Forgive me. But Hysam, is she? potentially would have stayed quiet the reputation that you told me five minutes ago is that they get old people out potentially if she wasn't the one that was talking to everybody they could have got felicia out just off the strength of she's an old person besides like basically uh uh, uh, her being like hey we don't really trust kirsten and things like that do like you think that um because not necessarily i think heisen would have came with the old people thing regardless you think so yeah because it is a lot of older people in this game versus other times. So I feel like he and he is what like a, a a doctor for older people. So he has that in him already. Well, he says as far he, as he a, said he's a nurse practice, you know, he, he, he <laughs> said he's a nurse assistant. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so I think it's a gerontologist or something. But yeah, so he was I, to me, he was going to do that regardless. OK, so basically, you, yeah. So you think Kirsten really couldn't do anything to, to starve off her uh, the only thing she could do was win the veto to me. Really? People had their mindset. Even, from, 
Mm-hmm. Even, even from day one, you're basically saying like basically. No, not day one. I mean, it was things that she did that made people yeah. say that and that's, you and know that's... she's she's doing a lot, yeah. which she felt like she had to do because she was on the block. But she could have at least tried to make some more genuine connections yeah. instead of gameplay, and maybe that could have yeah, turned out differently. And that's basically what I was talking about. I was talking about from night one. I'm not really talking about from the past episodes. That if I feel like if Kirsten did not go to multiple people trying to form an alliance. That potentially, maybe she would have still got eliminated, but I don't think she would have got eliminated the way that she did. Mm-hmm. In the way that she was isolated, she was sitting by herself, she was a loner. It's a cold feeling when, like, you know that you going home. Yeah, but that's not um, singular to her. Whenever there's a target in the house, it just happens. It that just way. happens that way because it's like, yeah, we don't want to be chilling, joking in your face when wow. you're sending you home. So. Wow. I just rather not talk to you. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. how some a lot of people are. So anything else? Anything else you want to share strategy wise? Anything about Big Brother? Anything that you see? Not at all. I'm excited um, for the next HOH competition. Yeah. I really don't know who's going to win. It's really a toss up. So I'm excited to see which side of the house is going to get power. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, me too. Yeah. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment. We will read your comments on the show ask us questions ask, give us your strategy what do like you think is going to happen who do you think is going to win hoh yeah or basically whatever's going to happen but mm-hmm. thank you for watching um and y'all be good bye